Good morning. Welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. I'm your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai. This is episode 28. I'm calling it Morning Cop. <laughs> I um, wasn't planning on recording today. It's sort of, I was evaluating how much knitting I've done recently, and it's like feast or famine with me and right now we're in famine so last time I had a ton to show you this time I don't have very much but it's 10 o'clock Saturday morning Roland just went down for his nap he was dozing off in the car as we went to get our coffee my coffee and I put him down and I thought I feel like talking so jotted some quick show notes and here we are so let's have some morning coffee and uh jump into some knitting talk, shall we? <laughs> this week has been um, been interesting. So I'm actually going to start with, oh no, I am at the end of the row. I didn't think I was. So in the mail this week, I got my hoe bag. Yay. So that's for Stocknet Zombies, Amy and Megan. I really liked it. I was happy to get it along with my little treat that came with it. So I, I purchased it, but still, thank you ladies for putting the effort in and making the bags. They're very cute. I like mine a lot. And it's a perfect size. I actually thought it was going to be bigger, more like the Ravelry bags, which for me, those are more like sweater size. This is, um, I would say, probably four inches shorter than those bags, but it's perfect. It's perfect for a shawl. And the shawl I have in it, warning, warning, spoiler, is the Rockefeller by Stephen West. First, I'm going to show you the yarns I'm using. Um, first yarn is Into the World. Yeah, Into the World. This is the May 2011 color Inara. And that's an 80-20 merino nylon, right? So um, Steve has looked at this project while I was knitting it and said, Hello, Mr. Turkey. So it reminds him of a turkey. This color that he used to draw when he was a kid. So this color combined with this one, which is Sundara yarn. Sundara, my tag is, I guess I gotta take it out here. Yeah, Sundara yarn. One of my friends got this for me because she's all about cats. Um, and that's 100% superwash merino in her espresso over slate colorway. I absolutely love that. Vision. Espresso over slate. Doesn't that sound delicious? Well, not the slate part, but the color. Like it just. Oh, I think it's. A, I think it's a glorious color name. And so that's the. It's the chocolatey brown, but then it's very, very variegated, as you're about to see. So spoiler alert. I finished clue one. I'm just, just starting clue two. And you probably have seen this everywhere, but here's mine. <laughs> So that's what I have so far, and you can see how it's knitting up. Um, those little wedges are a bit addictive, you want to keep going. And then you can see here at this top edge, or at least I hope you can see the chocolate, the, um, the brown color, the way it is super variegated. So some there are real light points like here, and then darker points. So I really like the way that looks. Um, I'm thinking it's going to go like this, but I could be completely wrong. I'm not wild about it, I'll be honest. Um, the Into the World color is just so abrasive. It is so stark, contrasty, that really, really light. And there's Mac on the camera point. <laughs> the really, really light yellow lemon color to the really rich, saturated purple navy color um, makes for a very very stark contrast in through here I don't know how long you can see that so I'm sort of just holding my breath and going mm, la 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 this is going to be okay and if it's not going to be okay it's fine I'll just gift it to someone uh, remember I talked about my earth and sky last year the west knits knit along I wasn't crazy about it and they my uh someone else picked out the colors for me and I just powered through it and knit it, and in the end, it's my favorite. So I absolutely love that shawl. I don't know that I'll absolutely love this one, but um, I'm giving it a go. So I was actually tempted. I had This has pretty much been what I knit on ex exclusively this week. 
which is why it's going to be a short show. But um, I was tempted to cast on another one because I did really enjoy working the wedges, but um, I didn't. So we'll see. I'll just keep going. Clue 2 seems interesting. I'm, I keep trying to read it and envision what he's telling me to do, and my brain just isn't getting there. I think I'll have to get a little further along. I'm on like row 2 out of 43 to really see where the colors, how they're going to play out, and what's going to happen. Oh, that reminds me. Um, I don't have enough yarn <laughs> on either skein to complete the shawl. And I think that, just get it, oh, Mac. <laughs> Oh, Mako, Mako, Mako. Well, that's what the other... <laughs> he wanted you to look at his tail. So he sat down and his butt shifted the camera and then his tail went over the lens. But um, I don't have enough of either. So I'm thinking I have some nice variegated rust-colored yarn. <sighs> yeah, I don't even know the name of it. Dreamin' Socks? Something. I got it at a fiber festival up in Maine. Uh, so I have that a scan of that that I can mix in that I think would go really well with those autumnal colors. So that's on the needles. Moving along. Um, also on the needles has been, so I lied, I did knit on this, but it was over a week ago. I just haven't talked to you since. Uh, the Wendy Johnson Summer Solstice 20, 12, knit along. Um, so here's where I am. I am using Dreaming Color Smushy. Why can't I remember this? Could you help me? Yes. Smushy is the fingering weight. Classy is chunky. Classy is heavier. Maybe that'll help me a little mnemonic. So I am using Smushy with cashmere. This is color, I think it's 504 Global Mix. It's a great color. Really beautiful yarn, wonderful to work with. Uh, you may recall that I had an unfortuitous cast on. It took me like four tries to get all my stitches on the needles. Got them on the needles. I finished clue one. I've started clue two. I'm way behind everyone else on this thing. I am knitting the nups, so I am knitting the smaller nups is what I decided to do. So they are three stitch nups. I don't know, instead of five stitch. I don't know if you can see them if I do that. See, I really don't have much to show you on this, but I can tell you that um, I'm not really enjoying it. And I don't think it's the fault of the pattern. I think it's just not going with me right now. It's not where my head is at doing lace charts and nups and it's eating a lot of yarn. It's very time consuming. Each row is three because I made it bigger too. Can you see Linus getting in my bag? He loves this bucket bag. It's like, I bought a cat bed for 40 something dollars. Now if it's not full to the brim, he's trying to climb into it. <laughs> so anyways, I'm not sure this is going to stay on the needles. In fact, to be honest, I will more than likely rip this. I would say there is an 80% chance of frogging in the forecast for the global mix. Yep. Um, I just like the yarn too much and I'm not enjoying the experience enough and I'm behind the ball like knitting along like with the Rockefeller knitting with everyone else and being on pace and finishing and the day before I'm waiting for that next clue is so exciting I love to do that and this is done I got all my clues I'm done so I don't know either I'll um, so I'm just starting clue two maybe I won't do naps anymore that's one option I'll frog it. That's another option. I'll set it aside and come back to it in a while. I haven't even looked at people's finished shawls to see what they look like because I was trying to keep it a bit of a mystery for myself, but uh, it's just, I think part of it too is the nups are new to me and I'm not turning back and forth like she says. Why would I follow the instructions? I'm stubborn. I'm knitting them all on one side. And they just look so messy and that's part of me and and in one of my repeats I got one stitch off and I couldn't find it a little anal over here but I can't stand that like so I had to knit two together and I'm just pretending I don't know where it is I know it's in my peach stitch marker section 
I don't know where exactly, but you know what? That's going to bother me. And so you're saying to yourself, just finish the darn thing and gift it. You're trying to gift these things. You, every time a relative sees me knitting them, a female relative, she's like, oh my god, I would love that. Or they see me wearing them. Uh, Multnomah, by the way. They see me wearing them and they're just like, oh, it's beautiful. So, more to come on that. Let's, we'll just put it aside and think about it. Right now, my energy is into the Rockefeller. So, and with the amount of knitting time I have, I really don't have time to do multiple projects and keep up with everybody on this thing. So, I'm really just focusing in on that when I'm home and knitting. But there is another shawl on the needles. Mm. I feel like I should take a sip and ask you, what are you knitting? What's on your needles? <laughs> I'm like, okay, now it's your turn to talk. Let me throw it over to you. <laughs> uh, what? You're not knitting a shawl? No, of course you are. You're knitting along with one of those knit alongs. I'm certain of it. So the other shawl on the needles is the Sand and Sea Shawlette by Alana Dacos. I love this sketch, actually. Can I move a bit so that I'm not giving anything away? So this is from the Coastal Knits book. Look at how she, they did the schematic. I love it. I think it's a beautiful little sketch. It's a nice touch in the book. So it's from the Coastal Knits book. And I do recall I pressed this on at SSK. Uh, it is a two color shawl, so the border is a second color. I am using, bag, really bag. I am, for my primary color, I am using um, Albrigo Sock color 870, which is Candom. At least that's how I'm going to say it. And that is glorious to knit with. I absolutely love it. My edging color is color 855. Agus, Agus, which is a beautiful teal green, teal, yeah, teal green color, I'd call it, aqua, A agua, I'm guessing that's probably water. So here's where I am so far. I finished the first section, which has really cool short rowing and all kinds of stuff to make it shaped, to give it that, to give it the triangular shape without doing a small basically is what it is the um, construction of this which of course intrigues me and I just started done two rows with the green color I don't know if you can even see that, but that's where I am so far so it's just a lot of stock in that but this uh, highly variegated yarn I think it speaks really well just it's gonna be gorgeous so this one's not a giveaway. I absolutely love the hand to knit with it. Everything about this yarn. So knock on wood, it loves me back and wears really well. So that's the, but again, I haven't worked on that since last Friday when the clue came out for the Rockefeller because it's so focused. And then lastly, on the needle, so my purse knitting, um, these are a pair of socks for my 12 pairs of socks for other people in 2012, which I'm not going to say failing miserably, but I am going to say not excelling at. <laughs> so I've completed a pair for my um, Christmas and a pair for Roland. And now this is the third pair. So you can see the first one is finished. And is there anything more boring to knit than a black and gray sock? I submit that there is not. Um, there's the first one. It is, what is this? Lux? It's some, um, it's a Joanne yarn. Please hold. It is Sensation, Souls and More in Gray Shades. Color, lot, no, color 1810. So they, are, you too could have a slightly fair isled massive man sock if you go to your local Joanne's. <laughs> Um, I think it's a, it's pretty itchy on my arm, I'll tell you that. Yeah, 75 wool, 25% nylon, so I'm guessing not merino wool, because it, it was itchy. So there's the first one. Here's the second one. So you can see, I'm getting there. 
I'm almost done. Um, the heels, this heel, so it's just a 4x4 red. Plain, easy, simple. My version of a vanilla sock. This heel I did, they're both um, slip stitch heels. This one I did my slip stitches on the knit side and it's got the normal, you know, like the little ridges that you see on a slip stitch heel. This one I did my slip stitch, slip stitch stitches on the purl side and you really can't see them at all. I don't know if I, I do, I'm guessing it's that I purl tighter and so it doesn't have as much extra yarn to have the looseness to raise one up. I don't know. But it did mean that my heels are not identical because I used that much, oh it's making my nose itch, that much less yarn. So probably um, two rows off by that point. And then I'm knitting along, knitting along, knitting along. And then about here, I get to a knot in the yarn. And I, you know, split it apart at the knot. And so I had two tails about this long. And then I just kept going, thinking that they would have tied the black yarn back to the black yarn. They didn't. They tied it to a different point. And so now you see that the anal... Stephanie, who likes everything to match, has socks that are not matching at all. So you can see that this is Fair Isle here, and it's solid black here. It's like they took out a whole chunk of the repeat. They probably took out that much of the repeat, and so they're going to be off. So here's my thought. These are not for me. I will not see him wear, he will wear them for sure. They're for Steve. Um, but they'll be under his pants. These are super long cuffs. They're like the longest cuffs ever in the history of mankind. Seriously, he's a size 11. And then look at that leg I did beyond. I don't have to just tell you. I can show you. I can measure for you. These are 8 inch cuffs. From the back of the heel flap, top of the heel flap up, it's an 8 inch cuff. That's insane. Good thing he has thin calves. Anyways, um, yeah, so I did 4x4 four four ribbing, and then once I got to the what I wanted to be, the inch at the top, I did 2x2 two two ribbing, just so it was nice and stretchy. And it is, and I believe I did the modified Russian bind off. Yes, I did. That I learned from Miss Laura Lala. So, um, so here's my thought. They're not for me. I'm not going to wear them. I want to see if he's even going to notice. I don't think he will. And there are some things that he's like me and very particular about, but most things he's pretty go with the flow. So I'm thinking even if he does notice, it won't bother him. So keep going, knit on. I'm going to line them up. You can see I've got about three inches to go. Two inches and then I start the start my ribbing in it here. So <sighs> They've been a slog, a labor of love. And I think... Once I'm done these, my goal is going to be, because um, we celebrate, I'm an only child, so we celebrate Christmas with my parents. And our, us, like the four of us have always celebrated together instead of them doing one, us doing one, and then we do Christmas together. We always just throw all our gifts together and have one together. And I'm thinking we'll probably do that again this year, even though Roland will be with us. It'll be more fun for him. And... Um, I'm thinking I'd like to knit a pair of socks for all three of them. That would be nice. So, next on the needles when these are done are going to be a pair for my mom. Just plain vanilla. She likes navy blue. So, that's I'm looking at the blue yarn that I took out to knit for her. We'll see. So, that's, that's what I'm thinking. And my dad, he'd wear just about anything I knit for him. So, maybe I'll... I knit him bright yellow fun ones and he wears them all the time. And I knit him a pair of, like, yellow... Uh, gray one, gray socks that had a one inch cuff, just like ribbing around after the heel. He hardly ever wears those compared to the yellow ones, so. But one was, the yellow ones I dyed myself and they're 100% no. They were, uh, I think Huntington from Webbs, an 80-20 or 75-90. It was a base merino nylon yarn. And I think they're much warmer than the other ones which were Comfort sock by Barocco Comfort and that is in a uh, wool acrylic blend like 50-50 and I don't think they keep the hold the heat as well. So 
Anyways, I have about projects I'm not showing you, I'm just talking about, but. So that's what's on the needles. Um, I showed you what came in the mail for a project bag. I did get oh, my club shipment. My Into the World club shipment. Can I can't tell you, I absolutely love that club. I felt a little guilty on the heels of SSK getting yarn in the mail. But you know what? Where'd I put it? It was just so perfect that I can't feel bad about getting this yarn. So I haven't even taken it out. I just opened the packaging, read the color to see when we had a good chuckle. So this is Into the World July Fiber Club. Um, three ply superwash merino. Must be 100%. Doesn't say. But it is a fingering weight and it's 490 yards, so it's a really generous skein. And the color game, are you ready? Are you ready? I, I wish I, I should do, could do that. It's just so beautiful. Um, the color name is Captain Tight Pants. <laughs> so this is our Mal colorway. <laughs> Still with the Firefly theme. If you didn't watch the show, um, it's only one season long. I think it was like 12 episodes, but I've rewatched them several, several times, and it's a great show. So this is 490. Was my other skein 490? Now I'm wondering. Maybe I'm not short on both. Maybe I'm only short on the brown. Hold, please. No, this one's only 400 because this was an 80-20. Okay. Anyways. So that came in the mail. Captain Tight Pants. Captain Tight Pants. And then, um, let's talk about drawings, prize drawings. So for next week, are you ready for this? I can't believe I'm doing it. It's crazy. I am offering up my skein of Vibrant of Dye Works Hot Time Summer in the City Gradient in the Serenity base, which is an 80% merino, 20% bamboo, 430 yards. And in order to win this beautiful skein, I haven't even taken it out of the bag. Well, it's tied funny, I think. I guess it's not tied funny. I guess I could easily fondle it. Oh yes, it's very nice. It's very nice indeed. I got two gradients from Fibernip. And while this one is a glorious color, I, I yeah, <laughs> I don't need two gradients. I feel like that's a little bit wasteful on my part, and so why not share a little bit more SSK goodness with you guys? So, for next week, nominate someone else to win this. I know! <laughs> We're probably going to have, like, the smallest response ever. No. Um... Nominate someone else's project. Tell me a project that you like that they're knitting and you'll win this or they'll win this. I'll do this and another yarn and um, if you're picked you get you can say who gets which one. But there you go. Hot time, summer in the city. Up for grabs. Nominate someone else's project that you like. And then for this week the drawing that we're doing is for the skein of Hiawassee Creek in her Merino Sock Resilience colorway. That's also from SSK. There were 71 responses in the group. And lots of great ideas, of course. I know that a lot of people were talking about the high yardage of this game. And that they would knit something. Knit um, knee socks or larger sized projects, but if I generate numbers 1 through 70, through 71, excuse me, you can see the winner is number 43. I have to remember to tip it slightly. I think you can see it better. Tip it. So, response 43 would be, I know my hair, it's Saturday, I didn't want to do my hair, and you don't care, we're just having coffee. What about? What else? Number 43 is Elmalin. Elmalin, who said, Oh, a Madame Felt shawl would be lovely in this yarn. Elmalin is. Come on. Lainey. 
So Lainey, drop me a note and I'll get this in the mail to you. Send me a PM over on Rob. So let's see what this Madame Phelps shawl looks like. That is by, oh, that's very, very pretty. What, did you want to see it? All right, I guess I'll share it with you. That's by Gretchen Renovic. I don't know. Five bucks on wrap. Madame Felt Shawl slash Shawlette. I'll link it in the show notes. So, that is this week's episode. Um, show notes on the blog. You can come over to the discussion board over on Ravelry. If you're not a member, join. I'd love to see members it makes me happy I love talking to you guys and if you want to leave a comment on the thread and nominating someone else to win hot time somewhere in the city that would be be muy muy bueno we've been reading the Skippy John Jones books yeah there there's a bit of a challenge for me but I think the more I read them the better I'll get with the pronunciation so yeah that's this week's episode, right? I hope you are enjoying your summer, summer vacation for some of you. And take time for knitting, enjoy it. Really, I need a closing line. Maybe that should be next week's drawing. What should Stephanie's closing line be? But take care of yourself, enjoy your knitting. I will talk to you in 10 days.